Welcome to another fun educational video with Mr. Paris. Today's subject, pop art. Let's dive in. To understand the pop art movement, you have to imagine going to a museum filled with some of the greatest works of art in the history of, you know, art. How do you feel? Excited? Inspired? Wowed? Well, if you were an art student in the 1950s, the main emotion elicited from a trip to an art museum was boredom. Can you imagine that? Being bored by looking at artistic masterpieces? I mean, who were these art students? Actually, they were probably a lot like you. Are you crazy? They felt that the art their teachers told them they were supposed to like didn't have a lot to do with them. They found it irrelevant to their lives and the world they were living in. Now, I see two issues here. Number one, they needed better art teachers. But number two, they might have had the teensiest of points. So what's a young art student with a chip on her shoulder to do? Start a new art movement, of course. And so the pop art movement was born. It started in Britain and, like the Beatles and the Stones, invaded America. Pop art used popular culture as its subject. Critics of pop art thought it was banal, which means lacking in originality and boring. And while they might have had a point that Warhol didn't design the Campbell soup can, and it therefore wasn't original, he did use the image in an original way. And I gotta say, when I look at these paintings, I don't find them super boring. Get it? Super? Soup? Nothing? Okay. Critics also said that art shouldn't glorify the mundane. In other words, true art should ignore the popular culture and everyday experiences of modern humans and exist in some metaphorical ivory tower of blandness. But what critics failed to see was that the pop art movement wasn't just glorifying pop culture, it was also commenting on it, often criticizing the commercialization of, well, everything. For example, by painting famous people in the same way he painted commercial products like soup cans, Warhol might have been trying to get his audience to think about how pop culture can turn real flesh and blood human beings like Norma Jean Baker into commodities, which are things people sell to others like Marilyn Monroe. So, like all movements in art history, there's a lot going on under the surface, which is what makes it worth this deep dive. That's it for today, kids. Go make some art.